Hey guys, another one of my driving videos, talking to you while I'm on the road. I'm on the road a lot. Um, I'm on my way to Ohio to see a brother in Christ, Brother Garrett. Get happily married to his wife, Noel, soon to be wife, Noel. Um, super excited to see this brother. I haven't seen him in a bit. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about a few things um, that were on my heart while I'm on the drive. Um, I'm just sitting here listening to Christmas carols <laughs> in November um, on my way. And I was just thinking about how, believe it or not, fall and winter are my favorite seasons. And Christmas is my favorite holiday. And I know there's a lot of legalist people out there who will point their crooked little finger at me for celebrating Christmas. Um, yes, I know it used to be a pagan holiday. Yes, I know Jesus was not born in, in the month of December. I believe he was born in the month of September, um, the month of Virgo the Virgin. Um, I don't know exactly why I believe that, um, beyond the fact that it is the month of Virgo. Maybe it's just a discernment, but I truly believe that he was born in the month of September. Um, just my personal belief. But Christmas to me, as I've gotten older, um, is such a, a joyful holiday because to me it represents Christ. Um, to the unbelieving world, it's about Santa Claus and jingle bells and sleighs and all of that stuff. And when I was a kid, that's kind of what I thought of Christmas. In fact, growing up, Halloween was my favorite holiday. Um, I love trick-or-treating and spending time with my friends and going to haunted houses and ghost hunting and all of those other things um, that I used to do when I was a kid. But as I've gotten older um, and gotten closer in my relationship to Christ, Christmas has become my favorite holiday and my favorite Christmas carols are the ones that talk about Jesus. Uh, Mary Did You Know, uh, The Little Drummer Boy, Holy Night, O Come Emmanuel, that's my favorite, my absolute favorite uh, song. And I've just kind of was sitting here thinking to myself as I'm driving, um, hold on here, I don't want to miss my exit, um, how, how my mindset has changed as I've gotten older and gotten closer to, to my relationship with the Lord and how I've kind of just thought differently about things um, naturally um, and how much joy this time of year brings me um, because what it, because of what it represents to me. Um, so anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you about two other things. Um, I watched this video the other day um, that really kind of got me a little bit up in arms. I was a little frustrated after watching it. Um, and it was a person, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to, you know, create drama, but it was a person who has a YouTube channel who uh, is very charismatic um, and teaches a, a lot of error, in my opinion. But he's a part of a deliverance ministry. And if you have not heard of what a deliverance ministry is, um, this is a ministry that believes Christians can be possessed by devils. Um, they make a lot of money, get a lot of business off of this error and this false teaching um, because they go around telling Christians that if they have certain signs that they're probably possessed by a devil and they need deliverance. And um, so these deliverance ministries basically profit off of fear, right? They instill Christians with fear that, oh, if you do this or you do that, you open yourself up to be possessed by a devil and you need a deliverance ministry to get you free of it. And they'll tell Christians this nonsense. Um, and they use fear because it brings countless lost folks who are lost in fear and condemnation uh, who will run to their ministries in droves thinking they need more deliverance than they've already been granted through the once for all sacrifice of Christ. And so I just want to remind any of you guys out there who might um, be caught up in this error or have heard any of this and maybe you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have this struggle or that struggle. Maybe I'm possessed by a devil. Maybe I need deliverance. Um, I wanted to ensure you, uh, brothers and sisters, that if you have the Spirit of God living in you, 
you do not need deliverance from a devil. If you have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling you, your temple, the temple of God, he does not cohabitate with devils. Okay, I want to make that very clear to you guys, that the Holy Spirit of God who dwells in every new covenant believer does not cohabitate with devils. I know it, it's kind of ridiculous that I have to say that because it should go without saying that the holiest being in all the universe who now dwells within every believer under the new covenant does not cohabitate with devils. Um, it's sad that I have to say that, but there are many ministries out there who profit and deceive many by teaching them this error. Um, and guys, it, it, it's, it's downright blasphemous to say that a spirit-filled believer, a, a person under the new covenant who has received Christ as Savior, who has the Spirit of God indwelling them, that they need deliverance from a devil is downright blasphemous, folks. I mean, it's just, I know that the people who are caught up in this, they're ignorant of what they're really saying. I don't think they truly understand the implications of what they're saying. Um, I, clearly, they're not meaning to be blasphemous and they're not intending to speak ill of God or his spirit. But unbeknownst to them and unknowingly, that's what they're saying. I mean, when you tell a believer who's indwelt by the Spirit of God that they need deliverance from a devil, um, I mean, that's just foolishness, guys. That's total foolishness. Um, you have everything that you need in Christ Jesus. The book of Luke tells us that as believers, we have been given full authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the powers of darkness, okay? You do not need a deliverance ministry to deliver you of a devil. You have the Spirit of God living in you. You are a child of God, a child of light. You have all the power of God indwelling you. You do not need to fear devils, serpent, serpents or scorpions, or the powers of darkness, because you have the authority of God indwelling you, okay? This is how, as believers, we have the authority to cast out devils. And yes, I believe, oh, that's Medic, that's my old ambulance service that I used to work with in Charlotte. I used to work with uh, Mecklenburg County Medic. It's one of their trucks. I used to work there. Anyway, squirrel. Um, anyway, as a new Testament believer, you do not need a deliverance ministry to deliver you of devils. You have all the authority of God indwelling you. And that's how, as believers, you have the power to cast out devils. Yes, I believe that today, casting out devils is still a thing. But there is not a single passage in all of the Bible where a new covenant spirit-filled believer ever had a devil cast out of them. Not one passage in all of the Bible where a spirit-filled believer in Jesus Christ needed deliverance of a devil. You know why? Because that's not how it works. If you have the Spirit of God indwelling you, you have been delivered of all your devils. So whatever symptoms you might be experiencing, whether you're struggling with blasphemous thoughts, or mental illness, or whatever, folks, it's not a devil that's doing that to you. Yes, the enemy can whisper thoughts into your mind, he can torment us, he can tempt us, he can cause ill in our lives, but you cannot be indwelt by a devil while simultaneously being indwelt by the Spirit of God. That's just not how it works, folks, okay? You, as a believer, have the authority to cast out devils. Do you understand that? The enemy doesn't want you to understand that. He doesn't want you to believe that. He doesn't want you to know the authority that you have as a child of God. But the Bible is very clear that as a believer who is indwelt with the Spirit of God, you have the authority of Jesus Christ to cast out devils. They should fear you. You do not need to fear them. The devil does not want you to believe this. 
He does not want you to understand this. The last thing in the world that he wants is for you to understand your identity as a child. You are a prince, a king of, of the kingdom of heaven. You are, this is why Jesus is called the king of kings. You're one of the kings. You are a king and a priest or a queen, if you will, if you're a female, as a daughter of God. You are royalty. You are given the authority of God as a child of God. You are an heir. Do you understand that? The enemy does not want you to understand that, but it's the truth. You do not need to fear the devil. He should fear you. Okay? So these deliverance ministries, guys, nonsense. You do not need to be delivered of devils as a child of God. Do not give these people your money. Do not give these people your attention. You have everything that you need in Christ Jesus. Um, on to the next thing without getting on a soapbox with that. But the other thing I want to talk to you about is a sister in Christ, Lois, shared with me a video um, of a woman speaking at a, at a, at a uh, conference that I really want to share with you. I can't do it when I'm driving. It's gonna have, I'm going to have to do it on my tablet where I can share my screen. It's too dangerous for me to do while I'm driving, obviously. Um, but it's a really good video, um, and it links with what I think is going on in the world and the agenda that's going on in the world. Um, and I want to share with you my opinion on what I believe um, the Mark of the Beast is and where we're headed in, 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 in reference to the Mark of the Beast and what I believe that is all about. Um, but it's a video that I'm, when I get the chance, when I get the extra time, I'm going to try and share with you. Um, it's a really good video. Um, and so keep on the lookout for that. But I just wanted to touch base with you guys. Wish you a belated happy Thanksgiving. Um, I got a lot going on in November and December. I'm going to be going out of the country in December. I'll be in Ireland for the end of December. So it's going to be tough for me to be making a lot of videos. But I wanted to wish you a happy holidays if I don't talk to you beforehand. And wish you a belated Thanksgiving and tell you guys how much I love you. So God bless.